You play uh, Paco Santiago Marin, his 30th anniversary guitar, right? Hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, this is, uh, I, I have uh, several of uh, Paco Marins. Um, this is the, the 40th anniversary. Uh, oh, okay, so you got a 30th and a 40th. Yeah, I have a 30th, a 40th, and a 50th. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, you, have, so, you have the whole so collection. So the, the last year I was uh, playing the 50th. But um, I returned to, to Paco just to make an adjustment in the, in the, um, the distance, uh, you know, between the, the, the strings, because I felt it that it's a little bit uh, too narrow for my fingers, and sometimes I was having some precision problems on, on the left hand. So I, um, I told him to bring me here to Cordoba. He came to my concert, and I told him to bring me the 40th anniversary. That it, this I always, or most of the times, I live always one guitar in, uh, in his uh, working place in Granada. Mm -hmm. So when I come to, to Spain, I don't have to travel with guitar. And then he sends me the, the instrument, and I play, and, and I'm not worried about, uh, you know, trying. Or first of all, traveling with my own instrument, that you know, that sometimes uh, the flight companies are putting a lot of problems. So yeah. just not to be worried, I travel without guitar, and then Paco sends me the instrument here in Spain. And in this case, uh, he came and well, uh, we switched uh, switched the uh, instruments. And uh, well, this is a cedar instrument, top cedar. Um, yeah, I don't know the, the, the typical uh, Indian. I think it's rosewood. Yeah, it's it? rosewood. Yeah, yeah. rosewood. Um, cedar also here in the neck. Uh, I mean, the strings are uh, knoblo, high tension, uh, carbon strings. Uh, by the way, because of my nails, I cannot play really with uh, nylon ah. because uh, they are really thin. So with nylon that are thicker, uh, I, I feel that uh, the sound is not uh, really, really good. I have no power enough or pressure enough to, to make it work properly. So with carbon, I got to know, or maybe because uh, uh, I also play uh, old instruments and uh, with carbon, uh, the sound is projecting mar much more also. So the thing is that I got used to the, these strings, and I think that the combination of carbon strings or knoblock, especially with uh, Paco Marin's guitar, is is the best uh, to me. I'm not going that is the best of the world. I consider it, yes, but uh, it's about uh, taste, you know. But to me, it, it, it's giving me the, the perfect balance between uh, the singing, the different possibilities of color. It's a really quick instrument. This is uh, the, one of the advantages of uh, Paco Marin's guitar. I, I consider that uh, they are really fast uh, reaction. The say. response of the, the strings. Of the, of the, not only, only in the strings, also with, uh, with nylon you can feel it, but uh, of course the nylon is a little bit more nasal and, and not so much uh, projecting on the in instrument. This uh, Paco Marin's guitar, um, uh, how you call it, or how you can say, uh, become more alive, let's say, with uh, carbon strings. Because it is really, um, uh, how can I say, it's a little bit uh, strange, adapting to the, the, the characteristic of the instrument. Mm. I don't know what Paco is doing, but uh, the, the, the response of the instrument is really, really quick. So you, you can just uh, change a little bit something here, and immediately the guitar is giving it to you. You know, you play and sometimes some guitars, it's like a, Playing up, wow, the, the sound needs too much time mm -hmm. to come out. Here, everything is so quick. Wow. So, this is uh, an advantage, but also uh, this, uh, this sound, but, uh, how do you call it this advantage? Because um, if you don't have a really a very uh, polished technique, then all the time you are changing the tone or adding uh, stresses, uh, accents, you know. So the consistency is... The consistency, yeah. So you have to be a really good player to play it's one. A, yeah, it, I, it's a, well, I'm not saying that I'm a really good player. No, you're, you're but uh, but uh, I, I develop much of my technique because of this instrument also. Yeah. Because I, I really have to focus on um, dominate this instrument because it's like a wild animal mm -hmm. completely. So maybe it's not as powerful as, as many other uh, guitars, especially those with the double top or whatever. But uh, anyway, the guitar is not an instrument that is filling up oh, 2,000 uh, people uh, holes. You know? yeah, so I, I don't, I don't really worry about this. But uh, projects really a lot, and um, the balance between the trolls and the basses is really so clear. Um, even playing here, the sound is. Really singing, and you cannot really feel that that the tone is 
changing mm -hmm. a lot. It's a pretty well balanced uh, instrument, and it's giving me more, most, the most of the things that I want from a from an instrument. Of course, it's not perfect, and it's not giving me the best for all the, the music styles. For example, I don't like to play baroque music with this instrument, but this is a matter of aesthetic. I like the aesthetic of the old instrument sound. So more uh, maybe nasal, uh, more maybe shorter, but not so much uh, sustained, mm -hmm. more like a duck instead of a super bright instrument. You know? So it's about uh, aesthetic. But it has a very round sound from what I hear right now like, mm. you know, in person. It has a very nice, warm, round sound, mm. and uh, wow! Uh, how how many since since when have you been playing Paco Santiago Mari guitars? Well, I think since I started my professional let's say career around 1997, something like this. Before, of course, uh, I knew about him a little bit, but uh, to be honest, I didn't have money to buy any. And I remember through my teacher uh, or my last teacher, Joaquin Clerc that uh, he used to play, and he plays, in fact, uh, actually. Uh, with Paco Marín, um, I remember that I was looking for an instrument. My, uh, my instrument was made in a, in a factory, so, uh, so it was not a really proper handmade luthier. You yeah. know? And then, um, well, I, I remember that I, that I told Joaquin, Joaquin, please talk to Paco and, and ask him to make me an instrument. Uh, I knew that uh, it would take maybe one two years uh, to the, the instrument is ready, and then he told me, "But Ricardo, you're really crazy. How can I order one instrument for you when you have no money to pay it?" And I said, "Joaquin, do it because uh, when I get the instrument ready in one or two years, I, I will find out the, the way to, to pay this. I will find the, the money in between." Mm -hmm. So the thing is that uh, this was something like beginning of 1997, and I learned about one guitar competition in uh, here in Spain called Paco Santiago Marin Guitar Competition <laughs> and the prize was hey, one third anniversary. <laughs> uh, it was in August 1997. So I won I, I went for it, you know. Wow. And um, I remember that uh, I was lucky, I, I won it. And uh, while I was playing a little bit just to, to like a like the prize winning concert, you know, it was just playing five minutes, uh, my telephone rang. Uh -huh. Because I forgot to switch it off. And then, um, well, people there in the audience, uh, someone had my telephone and then uh, switch it off. And then after, uh, Joaquin told me, yes, I was calling you because I wanted to collect my prize. And his prize was that I win the competition. Wow. So it was really <laughs> amazing. So I got suddenly 130 anniversary and I didn't have to pay for it. That's wonderful. And then the, the funny story is that uh, six months later, I, I did the... the Andres Segovia competition in La Herradura here in Granada sí. and I won again so, and um, part of the prize was another Paco Mari for the anniversary so this is officially the result of this competition that the prize amazing. of that competition he gave me the guitar three or four years later because of what I had already won I didn't need it so he was delaying uh, giving me the, the guitar you know wow and I didn't ask for it so one day he came to me and he uh, hey, missed the guitar this is the instrument, so I think he gave it to me, uh, gave it to me, I think around maybe 2000, no, I'm lying, I'm sorry, it was one cedar instrument, he gave me one cedar instrument uh, two or three uh, years later, but uh, I remember that for whatever reason he did it, uh, the length uh, was uh, 66. Mm -hmm. And you suddenly, okay, my hand is really flexible, but uh, I used to play 65, so I felt uncomfortable and finally I, I changed the, the instrument. And then he did one new uh, spruce guitar yeah. and gave it to me in 2003. And this uh, came later. Do you prefer cedar to spruce or the same or what? what? Well, I always uh, prefer the spruce because of uh, the chorus and, and the projection, usually in concert, the cedar, uh, uh, spruce uh, projects a little bit uh, more. Cedar usually sounds really big here, but maybe it's not projecting so much. But Paco is doing something, I don't know, maybe it's the, the, the thickness of the top or whatever, I don't know. But uh, even with, uh, with cedar top, it's projecting really, really a lot. And now, maybe because of the age or, or my nades, because uh, you know, nades are changing through your life, uh, I feel that um, a little bit more, more comfortable with uh, with Sida. Hmm. Hmm. Tell us about your relationship with Nablak. How long have you been playing Nablak? 
This is another funny story. Uh, when I started to study with Joaquin in, in Salzburg in 1996, uh, he introduced me in Oblak. Uh, because uh, you know that this brand is from Germany. So the thing is that I was playing with uh, those strings. Uh, Joaquin provided me them because uh, there was, they were difficult to, to find out and very expensive also. And, uh, but at that time they had a little bit <laughs> of problem is that the tuning was not really so good. So you can buy, you could buy five sets of strings and maybe two or three of them, uh, the first or the third string were out of tune all the time. Wow. So this, I don't know why, maybe at that time the material was not so good or not so much uh, developed, uh, the technique of making strings, I don't know. The thing is that um, I was playing with uh, Knobloch for, for some, maybe one year, two years, something like this. And then uh, they disappear. They stop producing it, or I couldn't find them anymore. Oh, wow! Yeah. Then uh, I got uh, one sponsorship from uh, Savares, and I was really happy play, playing for them um, with those strings for many years. Till uh, I realized that uh, someone uh, took the brand, uh, bought uh, the, the franchise, and then um, started to, to produce again the, the strings, but here in Spain. Uh, well, uh, we met by coincidence, I don't remember where exactly, and we were talking and I thought, hey, I was, with, you know, playing with Noblo for many years and for my nails, as I tell you, before uh, they were the, the best strings, you know, because of uh, they were really thin and so perfect uh, for my nails. The things that we were talking and, um, yeah, and, well, uh, we were talking about this and then finally I decided to to leave uh, Savares uh, and, um, and go back to Nabla. Wow. Wow. I really thank uh, Savares because uh, they treat me really, really so good uh, through all the years that uh, we were working together. And the strings are really, really wonderful. But uh, just because of, of my nails, uh, Nabla work better. Do you do a blend of strings? Do you have like higher tension basses, lower tension basses, like you know the normal tension or higher no. higher trebles? Because a lot um, of people do like a mix of yeah. different. You know. I was trying for some time uh, this uh, this mix of, of tensions, but uh, I realized maybe it's because of the Paco instruments, uh, Paco Marines instruments that are really sensitive. Uh, I felt that that the tuning was not really stable. Mm -hmm. So probably it makes sense, you know, when you have more string, more more tension in, in one part of, of the instrument, it is not pulling uh, regular in the, the, from the bridge, you know, and maybe it can uh, bend uh, the, the top or something. I don't know. The thing is that I felt that the tuning was not really good, and even the the, the action like in my right hand when you are, you are playing scales, for example, Poyanda, I was feeling that uh, oh, this is a pretty loose let's say or fluffy and then suddenly oh, a lot of tension you know on the other way around and it was a strange feeling for, to me so finally i decided to just use the same same tension wow. yeah.